Hello everyone and welcome to this video which is in our Reengineering the Chess Classic series. I'm Grandmaster Matthew Sadler and we are taking a look at some more games of David Janowski. This time against Emmanuel Lasker uh, at the Nuremberg International Tournament of 1896. Um, yeah, I mean David Janowski is best known for losing uh, uh, two matches very, very heavily against Emmanuel Lasker. Um, and um, yeah, you know, the tendency, uh, you know, after those matches is to say, well, he never stood a chance. But, you know, if you have a look at uh, some of the earlier games between David Janowski and Emmanuel Lasker, then, you know, it was far from a foregone conclusion what would happen. I mean, David Janowski seemed to have the ability, first of all, to uh, put Emmanuel Lasker into trouble from the opening. And he also seemed to have the ability to confuse him. Um, and this is what we're going to see in uh, in this game. And um, uh, yeah, you know, it's not often that you see this happening to uh, to the great Lasker. So yeah, Janowski clearly had some uh, some special skills that um, that uh, Emmanuel Lasker was not comfortable with. The only problem was was that uh, um, yeah, Janowski was uh, not always accurate in uh, in realizing his advantages. And uh, certainly, I think as the years went on, Lasker's defence got better and better. He got tougher and tougher, and it was uh, yeah, you know, harder and harder to put him away. And uh, somehow, um, Janowski's um, yeah, a little bit careless style, you would say, you know, didn't always manage to uh, to put away all the points that he should have. Um, but this one he did, and uh, this was a, a very interesting, confusing game. So let's have a look. So once again, it was a Berlin and a pure one as well. So uh, bishop b5, knight f6, castles, knight takes e4. And now rook e1, knight d6, knight takes c5, bishop e7. And uh, I mean, this position has become a real uh, regular guest at, um, at the top level. Um, what White's tending to play uh, nowadays is the move uh, bishop f1. But uh, bishop d3 was, uh, was very popular in the 19th century. And uh, well, you know, you can understand, right? I mean, uh, White's pointing the, <laughs> the bishop at the, uh, the h7 pawn. And remember, you know, that's the, the kind of the one defect, I suppose, in Black's position, that the knight on, uh, uh, on f6 has left its post and ended up on this rather odd d6 square. And uh, yeah, you know, White's, uh, okay, White's blocking in the d-pawn, but this bishop is going to, uh, to go to b2. You're going to get those Horowitz... Uh, um, uh, bishops pointing towards the king it looks very very dangerous indeed um, yeah and certainly you know in the 19th century with uh, no computers to uh, to find accurate defenses then um, yeah it's definitely a very interesting move now we actually saw a game earlier of David Janowski against um, Harry Nelson Pillsbury very big expert in the uh, in the Berlin and Pillsbury played knight b4 and actually here queen g4 hitting uh, b4 and g7 would have been very very strong Stockfish uh, showed some excellent uh, play from here um, Lasker played uh, the very solid castles um, but after knight c3 yeah he didn't really play the uh, the way the engines wanted the engines always really want to take on e5 um, and here to play c6 and when the rook goes back you just play the knight round to e8 and uh, well you know it's uh, it's sort of uh, taking a while but that knight can get round to f6 if you want and uh, you know we're going to play d5 as well and everything's getting developed I mean black looks very uncomfortable for a while but it's very hard for um, for white to uh, to actually exploit that um, in this game um, Lasker played knight e8 um, which is not a bad move. I mean, uh, you're preparing knight takes e5 and then the rest. Um, but uh, Janowski took the opportunity here to play the move knight d5. Um, and uh, um, just threatening knight takes e6 and uh, knight e7, also preventing black from playing d5, and just vaguely, generally putting pressure on the black position. I mean, you know, when you look at it with an engine, it doesn't look like very much. But when you're playing this with black, you, you know, you're always having to consider ideas even like sacking on h7, for example, or queen h5 ideas. It just feels dangerous somehow. It feels like you could overlook something and just uh, say, whoops, there we are, my whole position's gone. So bishop f6 was played by, uh, by Lasker here. Um, and uh, yeah, you know, willing to uh, to give up the um, uh, the bishop pair just to get some uh, some exchanges. You know, it's a very sensible way of playing. But uh, Janowski, um, yeah, just started mixing things up here. Um, the engines want to play knight f3, uh, d6, h3. Stop the bishop coming to g4, and the favourite uh, 
Tarash prescribed way. Um, and then just to go bishop f1 and d4. And you know why it's just got a slight advantage, slight uh, a space advantage. Nothing much, but uh, hey, it's a Berlin after all. But uh, Janowski played the move knight g4, which is, uh, ah, I don't know, really gorgeous. Shows the right spirit at least. And after um, uh, Lasker's d6, Janowski played rook takes e8. Um, and this is the sort of play, you know, that uh, that Janowski, this is the sort of stuff that Janowski did. And, um, well, I think you can see throughout the rest of the game, you know, I'm pretty convinced of this, that um, that this really affected Lasker's balance uh, somehow. You know, uh, he was the master somehow at, uh, you know, um, uh, getting his opponents off balance, playing in ways that they didn't like. Here was Janowski doing exactly the same to him. Um, so rook takes the eight, takes takes. Now, the engines are not amazingly impressed, but uh, I mean, uh, you know, often um, exchange sacrifice in order to weaken the opponent's king is kind of about parity. Uh, there's another game that I've analysed on this channel uh, between Stockfish and Lila Zero, where I looked at, you know, the sort of anatomy of an evaluation. And um, yeah, you know, th this was uh, a number of positions like this where you say, yeah, you know, it's, uh, it's the exchange, there's no immediate threats, but the weak king is, um, is kind of a problem. You know, and uh, the engines just actually want to play very solidly. Bishop f1, have the knight on f4, you know, ready to come to h5, and then just develop, you know, normally like this, and, uh, and just claim that uh, the two bishops and the exchange and uh, the, uh, the weakening of the black kingside pawns is sufficient, you know, uh, compensation. That's quite interesting, but of course that's not really a, a human way of playing. You know, it's uh, we always look for something more um, more direct, really. And um, Janowski played b3, and actually uh, after the game he bemoaned this move and said that he should have played b4, which would have been quite interesting. Um, the engines don't consider it to be, you know, particularly better than um, than b3. But um, the whole point is, you're going to see uh, what actually happens, is that Lasker, in the end, he tries to block out the pressure of the dark squared bishop um, along the a1h8 diagonal by playing c5 and d4. Um, yeah, Janowski was saying, if I played b4, black wouldn't have been able to play c5. Very interesting idea. And uh, yeah, who knows, that would have been quite shocking. It's quite surprising in a way, because uh, against uh, Pillsbury, Janowski played uh, b4. So uh, you would have thought somehow that uh, that he would have, uh, yeah, that sort of idea would have been in his head. But um, he played the slightly tamer b3. Knight e5 and now bishop b2. Not an engine favourite move. And nor is Janowski's next move. I mean, these moves, the engine was really not impressed at all. Now, why was the engine not impressed at all? Well, the engines want to take on d3 and play a move like d5. Um... And, uh, you know, in principle, they're seeing, you know, reasonable advantages here for black. Um, but, yeah, I don't know. You know, the games were not amazingly convincing somehow. Or, you know, at the very least, I was always, I always had the feeling of, well, you know, is that really better? Is that is that clear? You know, I'm not sure. Feels a little bit worrying. You know, white plays a move like bishop d4, stops d4 happening. The queen's coming out to h5. Maybe we'll get the rook into f1 and get the pressure in here. You know, it's the sort of thing that can that could go wrong quite quickly if you're not really, really accurate all the time. And okay, you know, for uh, for stockfish that's a given, but you know, for a, a human uh, player, not a given at all. So yeah, I mean, most probably, uh, you know, uh, um, stockfish and dragon, they're absolutely right. That would have been the best idea, um, and you can cope with whatever pressure white has, but. Yeah, I don't know. I wouldn't. Uh, I wouldn't feel comfortable with black. I mean, actually, in this position, this looks like very reasonable compensation to me. So Lasker played d5, and um, uh, Janowski played bishop f5, d4, and now queen h5. Very sneaky little idea. If you take on here, I would go check, and then I got this little <laughs> bishop a3 check. That's one, uh, you know, advantage not having played b4. You've got uh, this this diagonal. And of course, after rook e7, then queen h8 check is made. So Lasker played knight g6, and now knight g4, and then c5. And here's maybe the first moment where uh, Janowski sort of uh, went off a bit. Um, you know, I think he's pl probably played this very intuitively up till now. You know, just uh, putting his pieces on decent squares. He sacked the exchange, given those weaknesses, and then he sort of, you know, converged around this f5 square. But now, you know, Lasker's reacted pretty well 
putting the pawns on c5 and d4, shutting out this bishop. Now he has to find something. And, uh, well, you know what the engines want to do? They want to play, um, well, either uh, a move like c3, just breaking open the center, which, you know, seems very, very natural to me. Um, this, there was also this move from uh, Dragon. Dragon's always uh, one for the un unusual moves. And, uh, you know, the, the point about f4 is that it, you know, it takes control of e5, and it might well give you the opportunity to, you know, bring a rook into play this way. So, um, in actual fact, uh, yeah, you know, the engines were, were drawing lots and lots of games from here. So, you know, they might be complaining about uh, Janowski's play, but, yeah, it was, you know, still pretty decent compensation there. But, I mean, C3 is really the, uh, the move I would like the most, just uh, trying to break open the centre. Um, for example, King G7, uh, we were getting takes, takes, Rook F1 from, uh, who is this? This is Dragon against Stockfish. King H8, F4 now. Rook C6, F5. And uh, after knight e5, well, actually, uh, you know, dragon was just grabbing this pawn, taking it back. And yeah, you know, I mean, black isn't um, in any huge danger yet. But, you know, if this diagonal opens and white's going to start, uh, you know, uh, you know, sort of uh, uh, chipping away at that uh, solid center, then it could get quite dangerous. And black doesn't really have any big threats yet against the um, against the white king. You know, it's 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 a reasonable compensation position and for a human player, quite difficult. But Janowski went a bit bananas, really, in this position. He, you know, for a number of moves, he sort of lost it a bit. He played uh, h4, which is um, a little bit weird. I guess he was kind of expecting Lasker maybe to take on f5, and he wanted to have this h5 move in. But uh, Lasker actually played very sensibly here, just uh, king h8. And after knight h6 from Janowski, just queen c7. So, you know, Lasker just uh, really waiting um, um, for uh, uh, with this position happy that he's uh, restricted the bishop happy that this rook can't really get into play and um yeah just playing very solidly there and um well c3 came from um from uh um Janowski, uh, just trying to open up center and here uh, well bishop takes f5 was good from uh, from Lasker playing this just at the last moment when uh, you know he's ready his rooks are connected he's ready to develop but here this move queen f4 would have been really strong oops sorry Queen f4 in this position. Um, so what are you doing? You're, um, uh, well, covering queen h6, for example. That's uh, quite nice. But you're also threatening queen takes d2. And you're also threatening, this is the really nasty threat, rook e5, pinning this knight. So if you go c takes d4, we go queen takes d2. Just in time, attacking the bishop on b2. So uh, before this diagonal gets opened. And actually, the engines found nothing better than queen h6. But of course, yeah, OK, if the queens are being exchanged like this. Uh, then, uh, you know, white's, uh, black's just got a really huge position. Rook e2, you know, black's definitely much, much better in this position. So queen f4, that was really the move that would have, uh, you know, uh, sorry, queen f4 in this position. That would have uh, really turned uh, turned the, the whole game around there. Um, Lasker played rook g8, which, which wasn't bad. Um, but uh, now um, uh, Janowski played g3, and, and you really get the feeling somehow that, um, uh, that here Lasker sort of showed his confusion i mean that's really what i feel um that um you know he was expecting somehow well i you know i should be able to get a win here just to exchange up this you know <laughs> this idiot janowski is just playing uh, crazy stuff um and somehow he sort of got confused because his next move was absolutely appalling it can never ever be good um in actual fact uh, you know uh, you know, he's missed one chance with this queen f4. Maybe, you know, that was uh, a little bit of annoyance maybe on, on, on his part, you know, that uh, that he'd missed that move. Um, and the engines want to play queen d7. And the idea is if it takes here, we go knight f4, exploiting that pin and the, you know, the queen is awkward. So um, knight h6, rook e8, queen f3 was um, was the idea. But yeah, you know, black's still nice and, uh, and white's a little bit uncoordinated here somehow. Um, but Lasker played the move d3. And, uh, well, after c4, what else? You know, then uh, actually the engines already think that white is better here. You know, just, uh, uh, again, it's, it's that thing, right? I mean, um, uh, active pieces, um, a weakened uh, black king, easily worth the exchange in the, uh, in the engines book. And uh, after queen c6, Janowski didn't play the engine's favourite move, but, I, I, you know, for me, it's definitely the move that had to be played. It's um, knight, sorry, knight e3 here. Um, yeah, the engines are looking at uh, playing uh, knight h6, rook g7, queen d5. 
Uh, the idea being that, um, yeah, this pressure is quite tricky. Um, black goes knight e5, you go king g2, and you've even got ideas like f4, for example. Um, so this would actually have been quite good for white, but it's it's a very, it's not a human thing at all. What Yunoski does is perfectly natural. You know, you're just bringing this knight round to d5, covers any threats, blocks the a h1 diagonal, which is a little bit sensitive for black, and of course combines against the f6 square. Um, yeah, Laska played rook e8, knight d5, and the confusion keeps on coming. He played the move knight e5, um, which is all very well, but yeah, um, it's, um, uh, yeah, you know, White's just getting more and more opportunity here to uh, to, to combine against the, um, the f6 square, and this knight is not a good barrier on the, um, uh, on this, uh, on this diagonal I mean you know eventually something like f4 whoops sorry f4 could take place um, and here Lasker went very seriously wrong the best move was to go king g7 um, and uh, yeah you know the idea is that um, uh, yeah king g2 this was what the engines wanted and now the move uh, h6 um, and now uh, something like rook e1 for example yeah he went king g2 to avoid any possible knight f3 check discovery uh, knight d7, rook e3. This was the um, uh, this was the uh, what the engines wanted to do, and you know why is just going to pick up this uh, this d3 pawn in the end, and uh, well, what have you got? You've got uh, the exchange, a pawn, a weak and black king. White's obviously uh, you know not worse here at all. Obviously, uh, in actual fact, you know you, you, you'd always rather be white in this position than black. Black's got no pressure at all against the white king. White king's very safe. And there could always be some sort of accident for uh, uh, for black in this position. But that would have been the, the best, really, to keep it tight. King g7, not give anything away. And then just, um, yeah, just basically hope to uh, to survive this position. Uh, Lasker went rook g6 and h5 followed. And then it emerged that Lasker didn't have very much prepared against this line. So um, he played rook g5. Queen f6 check. And, well, it's horrible, of course. You know, this barrier has gone. Uh, Lasker's put his rook on g5, where it's going to get forked by f4, and on top of that, yeah, of course, the rook on uh, on, on e8 is hanging. Now, after rook e6, uh, Janowski might have played this move f4, which would be very strong. Rook takes g3, king h2, and then we're just going to play uh, bishop takes e5. But yeah, Janowski's move was also very, very good, knight e4. Um, yeah, Janowski's conversion technique was not always, you know, perfect. He always felt somehow that he was a little bit careless or you know um yeah you can always view that in two ways um you know conversion uh it takes a lot of nerves it takes a lot of nerves to be accurate move after move and to do it game after game in your career i mean that's always to be honest uh, just on a slight uh, tangent and diversion here what i find so impressive about um the english players like uh, grandmasters keith arkell or mark hebden you know they've been playing many many years also playing the weekend circuit they're having to win game after game against uh, you know um okay not elite opponents but still opponents who put up a good resistance and you know every game you have to have the same nerves the same control over yourself the same attention and they're you know they're uh, in their 60s and they're still going strong and doing that on a regular basis you know and um well i get the feeling that uh, you know for yanovsky this was quite tough and certainly um you know after about 1904 1905 his his results his play started to go down and uh, looking at his games you really get the feeling that the, the nerves went somehow you know and uh, putting away games was getting to be more and more of an effort because yeah some of the games he didn't win uh, in those years you know were, were really quite amazing um, but this is very good you know very simple I mean knight e4 um, obviously if you go rook h5 I go f4 um, Lasker went to rook g7 and uh, no no complicated stuff from um, from uh, uh, Janowski just knight takes c5 a little h6 there shoving that in with a rook's pawn and then knight d3 and we're just exploiting this pin and uh, yeah you know it's whack whack just taking pawns all the way and after f6 Janowski just took and played rook e1 and uh, you know what we're aiming up aiming up with here simply is uh, you know rook bishop and three pawns against um, against two rooks and you know yeah that's that's loads you know white's pawn structure is beautiful there's quite a few past pawns in there already and uh, yeah all that Janowski needs to do is exercise the necessary care and um, yeah I mean he did it quite nicely actually you can you know the engine finds uh, slightly different ways of doing things but uh, yeah there's never any doubt that uh, that Janowski was going to win this so bishop c1 is quite nice leaving a weak pawn on e4 
um, and protecting the pawn on h6. So Laska played e3, and then after takes rook h6, uh, we get this position. So Yanoski just played very sensibly, really. You know, d5 um, and rook d1, lovely. King g2, and now the king is just going to come uh, into play. King f3, rook h1, very nicely uh, tying a rook down to um, to the uh, uh, defense of the pawn. Bishop f4, and now the king comes in. And you know what this king is doing? It's coming over to the queen side to basically you know support the push of the queen side pawns. Um, yeah, I mean. Uh, yeah, I have to decide. Yeah, you know where do you want to push the pawns? Uh, probably the queen side is uh, somehow easier. You can use the bishop to shield these pawns and uh, just push these like that. So rook a6, a4, rook b6, rook b1. Yeah, you know, I mean, Yanoski not doing anything complicated, not trying to do anything brilliant, which I think was kind of uh, kind of the difference to what he sort of ended up doing in, in his later uh, career. Just um, you know, Laska sort of putting a bit of pressure dealing with it and then you know that you're going to chase that uh, that rook away and then you'll go back you know into your uh, attacking position again so this was very nice king b5 and b4 takes takes and now uh, Janowski's idea he just wanted to play a5 get rid of this pawn and then we're going to have these two connected pawns supported by the bishop with the uh, the rook coming in somewhere as well rook f8 rook h1 very nice make sure that Laska has to defend that pawn again king b5 Rookie one now, um, you know, the rook threatening all sorts of things there. King d7 and now a5. So uh, takes and c5, not even bothering to take that pawn back, just getting these pawns rolling very nicely there. And I mean, I think you've got to say yeah, that the technique is, is very, very nice from Yanovsky. It's, uh, you know, you just can't can't find any fault with it at all. It's very, looks very relaxed, you know, very easy. And, you know, you're playing uh, Emmanuel Lasker, one of the best defenders uh, the world has ever seen, you know, but uh, but he's got no chance whatsoever. So rook f5, now uh, a little Yanovsky little thing, bishop e5, giving that pawn away on f2, but just in order to um, uh, to advance the pawns. And this is a very nice move. We're hitting the rook on, on, um, on uh, f2, and if you come there, then we're going to deliver mate like that. Very nice little tactic, nicely spotted. I mean, those little tactics, they just, uh, they help you so much in converting. You know, it's just, uh, you know, that's really the difference between a, a difficult conversion and a smooth conversion. Just seeing little two, three move tactics like this. And, uh, well, if you're looking at great um, converters of, uh, of, uh, of advantages, you know, Magnus Carlsen is wonderful at spotting this sort of stuff. So rook f8, um, bishop c5, just a little nudge of the rook there. If you go rook e8, I'll go bishop b6, check again. Rook fg8 and now d6 and uh, well we're just coming in with uh, c6 king uh, king uh, c6 or we're even going bishop b6 check d7 you know it's it's just uh, completely gone so rook g5 check there king c8 and now maybe uh, you know Janowski missed a tiny little trick he could have gone there uh, king b6 with the idea of rook takes c5 d7 checkmate which is uh, very nice indeed but he played king c6 but yeah who's who's bothering really takes takes uh, forced just to stop uh, you've got to stop uh, white from playing d7 there king b7 rook e1 we're just coming round here oops to b1 rook g5 rook g4 king e6 and Lasker resigned um, we're just uh, you'll have a few more checks but then I'll just go rook b1 and then this pawn will be queening so there we are, you know, this is, you know, when you're looking at this play with white, um, you know, this is not the play of somebody who was um, um, afraid of, uh, of Lasker at all, you know, not somebody who, uh, um, yeah, who felt he had no chance or whatever, you know, there's a, a real, uh, um, yeah, you know, a real swagger about this and uh, simply, you know, give Lasker some uh, some weaknesses, give him a difficult defensive problem to, to hold and see whether he can do it or not. And uh, yeah, I mean, you know, this style of play really should have worked um, uh, in a number of other games, but somehow, yeah, the nerves, the, uh, yeah, that, um, that I guess the self-belief just, just wasn't there, uh, you know, uh, maybe, uh, you know, 10 or, 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 or 15 years later. But um, but uh, really, I was very impressed with this game. You know, it was a really, uh, really. You don't often see Lasker, you know, so so evidently confused uh, by uh, an opponent's play as uh, as you see here.
So there we are. I hope you enjoyed that video. Hope you're enjoying this series of Janowski videos. I've got uh, some great ones still to come. I mean, really, this guy played so many amazing games. It's just unbelievable. Um, so quite a few to come. Hope you're enjoying them. If you do like them, why not give a like, subscribe to the channel, take a look at my new book, Reengineering the Chess Classics, um, which is uh, really, really nice. Really sheds so much new light on some classic games. Shows some wonderful things that uh, you know that uh, classic players have done that have gone un unappreciated, and also shows some amazing new plans that have gone uh, unnoticed for all these years. But uh, anyway, you know, thanks very much for watching this video, being part of the channel, and uh, hope to see you at the next ones. Thanks for watching.